I was recently asked by a viewer to uh, give a tutorial or uh, show how I draw backgrounds uh, for, for my comics or come up with the backgrounds. Um, I have a feeling they're talking about uh, not the design of the world and how to make a city look or an 3D space uh, that suits the story, but how to come up with that and draw from reference and from your imagination to piece those together. That's definitely part of it. Um, but I have a feeling they're asking about uh, drawing uh, the background, making a, a figure in a three-dimensional space look like they're in the space, uh, in the same perspective that the, that the space is in, um, and make it look good, make it look like they're the right size to the objects in the room, um, that it's a nice looking composition, uh, the way the person looks in the space. Uh, I do think that is the main challenge uh, of, of making comic books beyond just the storytelling uh, qualities of it. Um, because when we draw uh, at first, uh, for most people, we're more interested in the figures and the the acting they're doing and the way they're moving, their expressions. Uh, and for me, it was, you know, battles and fighting and stuff, but it's always the figures doing it. And the background is more of an afterthought or it's just a, a sketchy plane, just a kind of a flat plane, maybe in perspective that they're on, even if it is a room uh, that they're in or, or whatever. And um, to to learn to have backgrounds or you could say to have your characters, your figures in a composition framed in a panel that looks nice and that serves the story. That's that's another thing to learn. And uh, the amount of love and attention we put into drawing figures and the expressions on their faces and bringing them to life and uh, just, all, just the attention we put, the love we put on it, the way we identify with these characters. If we could do that with, well, with the environments, uh, imagine how beautiful our environments could be and how good we could be at drawing them. You know, that's part of it, just drawing the environments. But then, um, it's not just that. It's not just drawing really good environments. It's putting the figures in the environment and framing it well, like I was saying. So, uh, for me, learning uh, about using the camera in film and how you compose your, your shot to show your figure in, in the three-dimensional space, um, is, is something that I learned uh, that I could apply to comic books. And I'd never really felt happy with my ability to execute a comic book until after college when I got back into drawing comics and realized something clicked now and I could do it. And I think this is what it was. It was the realization that I could use a panel like the camera and, and frame, frame the action and, and, uh, and then starting off right away, I'm drawing comics with figures that are in a three-dimensional space uh, where the background suits the suits the the image. So um, I'm going to go through some of my comic books and I'll make some points about uh, what I'm doing here. But this is not a uh, this is not really a tutorial or an instruction um, for that. Uh, I hope to make a video on Clever Kaiju's YouTube. Uh, we're just getting it launched, so I don't know if it's up yet. Um, but I, I have one I've already recorded for for that. Um, that's an instruction on drawing and perspective for comic books, which is a huge part of of drawing backgrounds. But I'll do another one just about drawing backgrounds, I think, uh, that's more uh, much more step-by-step -step instructional. And this, though, I am going to go through um, some of my comic uh, comics that I've done in the past and kind of look at those with you and talk about the choices I made uh, for the backgrounds and, and why. There's a lot of background noise today with construction. Um, bear with me. Uh, we are inside a worm. I did this in 2022. Now um, we have an establishing shot, uh, a close up, and then a, a sort of over the shoulder close up on him. Uh, and then this is kind of over the shoulder. Um, and, and I'm using camera language here, and you're welcome to look that up, but I like to think in these terms. So uh, in this shot, the camera is a little low. It's a low angle, and it's kind of up at her. It's it's really his POV, because um, you can see he's holding, uh, he's uh, proposing marriage, so he's holding the ring just barely in view here. 
I've chosen a background color from from the shot, uh, the establishing shot, and just put that in behind her. Now, if this was a camera, this might be uh, out of focus. The background might just be literally out of focus. And I can kind of imply that this way. But if I were to draw the figures behind her and the, the paintings and whatnot, um, that would start to look busy and to me unnecessary. Um, and then here, uh, this is a similar angle to this shot. These are a high angle. The camera's up and and looking more downward. Because he's kneeling and I wanted to show uh, him and her in the shot together, this shot kind of repeats here a little bit more extreme. Um, now, she's uh, it's a little closer to her head, you'd say, the camera. Um, and I went with a dark color here for the background for contrast because it's not just um, what is accurate, uh, it's it's what's interesting. So I can play with color. Um, it's at our disposal to play with. It's not something that we have to um, be married to, be forced to uh, follow always. So if this shot's similar to this one, you think you would have seen this tan floor, but that would have looked boring and it would have not had the mood that I wanted. Um, this shot, I've got the camera high and down. Uh, that means that we're seeing the floor and a little bit of, of the tables here. Again, bear with me on the noise outside. Okay. Now in this establishing shot, um, the camera's pretty far away. Uh, we're seeing the entire space. And, uh, We've got the, the main characters, the, the important part is near the center. And it's near the vanishing point, near the horizon line. Everything vanishes, every you know, line would, would, would uh, converge on a point up here. Uh, you'll see even the lines in, in the ceiling here converge there. And uh, I have the characters close to the center of the panel and close to the center of, uh, of, the, of the vanishing point. Um, that it's a little off center, but that is uh, that's a straightforward um, kind of shot to to establish. And with uh, comic books, it's often uh, a good idea to just center things, unless you have a reason not to, um, for story purposes, for you know some kind of mood you're setting. In this shot here, we have a, a vanishing point over here, just slightly off the page here. You'll see everything goes to there, but there's another point on this side that this part of the building converges to here. So this is a two point perspective. The horizon is low. Um, and uh, that's because I, I wanted to show that he's leaving uh, this burger place, heading to his car but that the sky is, uh, is, is strange. So that's the, really the important part here. And that's why I've got a very low angle here to show the sky much more. Here I have a bird's eye view, um, a slight you know, angle to it, uh, showing uh, these figures standing here um, you get to show the ground under them. Uh, this is kind of because they're looking up at the sky and it's kind of from the sky looking down at them as the shadow uh, of the worm going over the earth uh, covers them here. Yeah, I guess on this, uh, well, I don't need to comment on that one. Um, let's come back to this one for a minute. Uh, I've got, uh, he's leaving work, because I, I didn't just want to talk about perspective here. Uh, he's leaving his, his workplace here, and, and if you'll see in this panel up here, he, uh, he exits the door here, walks past these uh, vagrants, and uh, coming this way here. So um, the, the place he was leaving is on the left, because people read left to right. So he's leaving the place on the left, he is, and he's heading to the truck. 
And so A, B, C, I got it, one, two, three, I'll just uh, clear and easy to follow. And then the, the sky, obviously. And here, the important figure, the one we're following here is, is in the middle of the panel. I've got some extras around him, but he's in the middle. Here's another uh, establishing shot. Again, two point perspective. And um, this is the important point. Uh, their truck that they pulled up in to this uh, party. It's in the center, basically. I've got a lot of room for the sky and the wall of goo here because that's uh, that's an important part of it. I want it, I want it to feel expansive. So I've, I've pushed the important stuff down lower than it normally would be in a good composition. I've got it pushed down to um, to make this seem bigger and more prominent. Um, but I've got them in the center, so they're easy to find. Uh, you can use color to do that too, but I chose uh, for like an olive green truck. I have this limited palette, uh, so it's not like a bright object. Um, I, I, I chose to have two sets of headlights on um, for for lighting, uh, so I like I put the shadow behind this guy. So important point uh, you get this sense of the the circle of cars I've done that with the, the color too and um, figures around the edges um, I didn't put figures where they're gonna block the uh, the people showing up but I wanted you to be able to follow the truck here um, follow the your let your eye kind of follow through the the people and see what's going on enjoy kind of seeing what's in the scene. Um, you know, the, the choice of putting this uh, ground in, in the parking lot with the lights, um, I wanted to to have lights so that I could show this, uh, this perspective, um, kind of just continue that. Um, break up the pavement, uh, put the light poles here and here because I don't want them in the middle of the page. I don't want them blocking the important part. Um, you know, the reason the, the building's up here and the car's here, like I didn't want the car overlapping the building. Just keep things spaced out. And that has to do with my, my camera angle. If I had a lower angle, then you I might have to draw the truck um, overlapping the building behind it. And the figures here um, overlapping the truck if it was a lower angle. So all those all those choices uh, are made uh, for a reason. Here they're standing uh, on a street uh, of abandoned houses next to this wall of guts. Um, I've got a very low horizon, but not so low that you can't see, or so that it, not so that it's hard to draw. I wanted to be able to show the pavement that they're standing on. Uh, Show you the show you the houses, uh, be able to draw some objects like trash cans. Um, but I wanted a low horizon, um, so that the wall of guts is, is very high above them. Um, now, if you th if this were a camera, they typically have you know, more of a boxy view. This camera is down like at the hip level. Uh, because that's where the horizon is, and that's where uh, they're they're intersecting with the horizon is right around hip level, and so the camera's low on them, right? Uh, but it's it's got this it's able to see way up into the sky. So um, you might think of like this being the shot, but um, I'm able to to show a lot of the sky, or you could say the shot it would have been if it was a camera a uh, very large wide angle revealing a lot of the background and we've cropped it into this shape um, a shape that you know would never show on screen in a, in a show so we go from them looking up to uh, to them looking up talking to each other now we've got a high angle down on them and all I have to draw is a little bit of the street and the the curb 
So I used a little bit of curb to, to show that line of the perspective. Um, you know, the, the give you that sense of depth, a little bit of cracks in the pavement. Uh, I made sure none of these lines hit them. Over here, you know, back to the choices we make. Um, positioning them in the center of the panel, obviously, because um, that's that's more uh, it feels more balanced. Um, but also having the buildings not inter in, interact with them, like not uh, overlap them, or uh, so so to be able to put the houses out here. And let them get very small because of that low angle too but the houses get very small by the time they touch our figures because if the houses were, were larger they're gonna uh, overlap them more uh, and then the wall wouldn't look as imposing if you know if you had if the houses were very tall here then the the wall would look small in comparison I need the houses to look small with that low angle um, now uh, they look, you know, pretty large compared to those houses. But if you followed this line out quite a ways, uh, the houses would get pretty large. Uh, they're just very far from from the street where they're standing. So it just, you know, these this row of houses goes uh, a few more before it reaches where they're standing. Um, yeah, the position of of these lines of the of the trash cans and the and the details in the buildings uh, is all to uh, create this balance. Same thing with like where I've placed the the uh, darker blobs uh, in the um, in the wall of guts. Uh, I, I positioned them where it feels kind of balanced, like uh, between them and and that, and I, where it doesn't overlap them too much. In this shot, um, so with this one, I went with a really high angle. Uh, this is not, you know, something you see in film very often. Um, to because what I'm trying to show is there's a, a little guy uh, running into this house, and they're watching him and calling out to this the, well, this little this kid that's running into the house. Um, so we see the kid running into the house. And, and their their reaction in one panel. I didn't show that in one panel and then them in another. I put it in the panel together. Um, like I've said before, I try to combine multiple actions into one panel if I can, um, rather than break everything down into a single panel. Uh, it feels more living and more like uh, it's it's moving and there's things happening when you uh, that they're in a physical space when you when you can come, can put multiple uh, actions and elements together um, but in film the the angle would typically be low closer to their perspective on what's happening but if I were to do that it would be harder to see where they are at in relation to the boy and it would be harder to draw uh, making uh, I don't have motion. I don't have time and motion like film does to to where you could have a, a large static panel and a small thing running across the screen and uh, your eyes going to follow the motion. It's going to be drawn to what's moving. We don't have motion here. So I moved the camera at a high angle so that um, so that you can clearly see what's happening here uh, and and then look down here and see what's happening here. It's almost like two different panels. You got what's happening here, and then what's happening here. Um, but they're in relation to each other in physical space because of that camera angle choice. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, here the the uh, vanishing point is off camera. Uh, it's sort of off camera, off the panel. Uh, it's over here. The horizon's here. Um, so you're obviously your vanishing point, even in like a one point uh, perspective, does not have to be uh, in the panel. Um, well, I guess it kind of. I guess this is two point technically. Uh, technically, these buildings would be going that way. All right, here's a here's a, a one point shot, a one point perspective, because everything vanishes to the single point. Uh, them entering this house. So I exaggerated uh, their their bodies here. They're they're drawn pretty small. 
Um, but um, you'll notice that like, even though this hallway might be like four feet, six feet from uh, this door to these doors, um, the size difference between the door back there and this door is very substantial. Like the, the perspective is extreme. Um, so this would be a, a very, uh, this is not a long shot. It's not, uh, it, it's, it's kind of exaggerated, like a, a wide angle fisheye lens, not to the level of fisheye, but the, the perspective is more exaggerated. Like, like the camera's much closer to them and it's a little bit, um, un, uneasing, uh, make, uh, makes you a little uneasy how it, um, uh, looks a little exaggerated and, um, but I wanted to keep that camera tight to them and go with that. So um, you'll notice that my figures, because they have to follow the same perspective that the building does, his back leg is very small compared to his front leg. He's like shrunk here and stretched out on this side. And she's slightly so too. Um, and, and to draw those figures in perspective like that yeah, is something you have to learn how to do. And it's very hard to learn to do that by just drawing figures. Um, if you just fill pages with, with figures and you never put them on the ground, then you don't really get that practice of drawing them in perspective. Okay. Pick out, a, maybe I can pick out another one or two. Yeah, so I, um, this scene, uh, he shows up to uh, a camp. So they've been moved to like a worker's camp uh, or refugee camp or whatever. Um, and I've got a very low horizon. They're in the desert. I want it to feel very flat. The wall looks smaller because they're not as close to it. It's like mountains in the distance. Um, but... I just picked out a, a, some tent designs. I laid a few tents out, some water tanks, some toilets, some, a trash can, just a few elements here, the, uh, the port portable toilets and the tents. I'm just laying out a few elements uh, to give you the sense that this is a camp. Um, I knew that you were only in this scene for this one page. It doesn't have to, I, I chose not to do like some aerial view uh, of the of the camp to really give you a sense of how big it is and everything going on there I kept it tight and small and that was enough for this scene so he's he's going with this row of people showing up to this camp um I positioned uh you know there's this row of people walking you get you still get the sense in this panel that there's people walking with him towards this guard and and he's going that way too so we've got we have this angle, and then when the camera flips uh, to his back, that, that line angle of the crowd swaps. It becomes like a mirror image, right? So this angle of walking to this angle kept the horizon pretty similar. Um, but I positioned people and the tents where they don't overlap too much. There's kind of a separation. Uh, same thing here. I, the tent is overlapping his head some. Um, but, uh, you know, there's no details on it, like a doorway, uh, like this one has that would, um, that would, that would overlap him too much. Um, but it, but th it keeps things spread out and balanced where you see the figures in between those things. And, uh, and then from this angle, there's, there's no, there's no buildings. And from this one, there's just a little hint of a tent here. Um, and, and then no background again. So um, this page all has this desert background, but there's only a few panels that actually have to show a few things. Um, I guess, you know, so drawing these backgrounds, it has to do with these, uh, these camera positions that, that I need to work with. So it's not just a matter of how do I how do I put these backgrounds on this page. It's um, what camera angles do I, do I need to use, um, and then that'll tell me where to put my backgrounds. It'll it'll affect how I choose to draw them, what I choose to put in those backgrounds, 
uh, it's all related to to what's needed for the for the camera angles so I needed the bus so that's why I chose this angle I wanted to show he just arrived and then I've done a you know this shot and then the reverse angle so from this sh off the front shoulder to the back um, showing where he's walking to uh, from here to there side by side um, and I knew he needed to do that but he doesn't know that uh, that she is at the camp his uh, girlfriend uh, he doesn't know that she's come to live here too yet so that's why he's he's walking along uh, and she's very small here I put her in a brighter colored shirt make her stand out a little bit again I have a very limited palette so I didn't go go far with that um, it's just slightly stands out um, but you'll see that that his view is leading straight to her like the the horizon the uh, the vanishing point and like his head to to these figures to her uh, it, it, we, we see he's the focus of this panel because he's on the left we read left to right he's our focus and he's looking at her we go from that to uh, an over the over the shoulder I guess you would say with just a hint of his face in it he's he's the one speaking he's the one noticing her but we uh, I wanted the you know the reader to notice her at the same time um, so I had to have her big enough in the panel if I kept this angle uh, he could have said Heather and then you might understand that this is her but I wanted you to f realize it with him so as soon as he's realizing it's her so are you the reader we can go from his his over the shoulder shot to hers, um, and you don't really get to see her reaction to finding him. Uh, there's just a, it's just a choice. You have a limited number of panels to work with. We don't show her reaction until here. You get to a good shot of her face, her excitement to see him, um, and uh, you know I chose to to um have them meet over here where there's nothing in the background I mean at this angle if this angle was a little more this way you'd see the the water tank but we're seeing more this angle there's nothing back there uh, and same same here uh, she's seeing like here she's seeing this way across the tent so there's really nothing there either and that was intentional if I had to draw the the portable restrooms here behind her head that would look tacky it would you know just complicate the view of her and same thing here if there was a tank like around him that wouldn't look good either so I positioned the camera to keep it looking clean and here um, here I've got them centered to uh, to let him speak and her speak but in this panel um, I chose to move them to this side um, they're looking off in the distance, right? They're, uh, the, our, our focus is going off of them a bit. It's sort of the weight of the, the, the image, the camera, showing us uh, all this on the side. It, it, the weight of that shows, you know, they're looking this way off in the distance as they contemplate. It also leaves me a lot of room for word balloons. I wanted to show a more full view of them hugging that eliminates any space you know above their heads where where I could put word balloons I've got to put the balloons on the sides in this case it did result in a situation where I've got to do one of these big connectors go from this balloon all the way around to that one to here alrighty um, yeah here's an interior space when they go visit this house it's supposed to be a pretty nice cozy house one they wish they could have had before uh, the earth got eaten by a worm <laughs> um, but uh, you know I, I, I look I actually looked up homes and in, in, in different styles that I wanted here I, I looked up homes even for these little references um, and I pieced together elements uh, I didn't just photo reference and then draw what was in an actual physical space. I just looked at several different homes and threw them together. Um, they they break into the front door, and you know that they're entering the door here. But then the door they entered is right here. It's it's not centered to the panel, but it's it's you know on a third. It's close. 
Um, and the doorway is green because it's like it's green outside. The lighting is, is green outside. That's why you see that out the windows. So you see the green spot here and here. That's the door they just entered. And they've gone through a little foyer into uh, the living room. Um, it's a one point perspective, kind of middle horizon, middle view, kind of uh, shoulder, maybe shoulder height or hip height on him. Uh, for the for the level of the camera um, and here they're pretty central so they're in this house I don't show them you know walking from here to the bathroom I just I mean to the bedroom the master suite I just let them skip to it um, wanted them I, I needed to show that they that this was the kind of home they wish they would have had uh, that's what the story here is is for so it needed to look really nice um, but with, you know, in a way that I didn't mind drawing that felt simple for me. Um, so I went with something like this. This panel here, uh, yeah, let's say here, um, I chose to have the bed overlap him, but I didn't want the bed to overlap them too much. So, uh, but I wanted it to overlap some so that you could see, uh, well, so that you could see the bed. Um, but really this framing, it doesn't show you much of the room. You get the sense that this is a bedroom because of the bed. Um, but uh, you don't really see that much of it because uh, the focus is on them going, wow, look at this, not so much like seeing what they see. Um, in this panel, we've got a uh, one point perspective, the points up here. Uh, so there's a slight, you know, it's an it's an uh, up angle, a high angle, but it's, uh, you know, it's uh, that's their legs are going to be larger, and there's perspective on the figures too, not just the bed. So uh, they're larger here, and they're shrinking away up here, shrinking from the camera. Um, yeah, I wanted to just show them, uh, kind of change up the angle, uh, get them from you know, from starting their job, um, moving through to resting. Um, that's the story of this page. So I, uh, I could have done a different angle, but by moving the camera up, I can see their faces, their, their comfort. Um, uh, it's just a different kind of angle, a different shot on it. And it feels like, okay, we've, we've arrived just before, uh, things go bad, obviously. Um, very low angle here. Oops, sorry. Very low angle here. Uh, very low angle here. Uh, I wanted uh, so so here we've got um, they're rushing to join uh, their crew. The crew has dr left them behind to die. Uh, so uh, low horizon. The truck's going away. They're running. See, they're the focus. They're running towards the trucks. Uh, and I didn't want, you know, I, the trucks could have been up here. I could have had a, a much lower or a much higher angle, I mean, on the uh, on the camera, which would put the trucks up here. But if the trucks are too high, they're going to be where the word balloons are. So I, I kept a, a low horizon uh, to move the trucks down here and show them just shrinking away in the distance. Uh, but this next panel, I've done a very low angle sort of, uh, or faked it, we'll say, under, uh, so you're almost under his foot here, uh, looking up at him. Uh, the reason I chose this very low angle is I wanted you to see this huge wall of guts uh, that's approaching them, that's about to roll over them. So um, same thing here, I've got that same up angle, or um, I'm sorry, low angle showing uh, up behind them. Uh, that is for a reason this you could just do that for dynamics for fun in this case it was to show uh, the wall of guts yeah, and you can see how that that ends here I go back to just a, a stable uh, level camera and their shared look he's taller than her so I went with this uh, this shape that's something to consider. Sometimes people would think, well, I've just got two figures staring at each other. I'll just put a face here and a face here. But he's taller than her. Um, why not? Uh, why not uh, let your eye line here uh, angle? Um, 
you know, uh, think of your figures as actually existing in a physical space. Uh, and since he's taller, that's how that would need to go. Okay, I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you another interesting one here. This one is uh, Lincoln Valid. It's another sci-fi I did in 2022. Um, we've got a, a a van here. Uh, you know, they they close up the back. Um, signal for the driver to start driving, and we see that the, the van is in an alley. For this shot, I needed to show two guys carrying another guy into the van from another vehicle. Um, so this vertical, this vertical panel in a tight alley, it allows me with with a very, uh, a very uh, high angle on the camera. It allows me to show uh, they're coming from here, which is where we were in the last you know image, last page or, or scene. They're coming from here and down into here. Uh, it, top to bottom, left to right, how people would uh, naturally read an image. So I got to create that sense of, of motion and going from A to B in a panel uh, without being able to actually have motion. But uh, we, so we're, we get into the van, now the driver's going to start driving and we know they're in an alley. This, then this last panel here, we've got uh, the van is leaving the alley and it's getting onto the road taking him God knows where. Um, so we have a uh, one point perspective here, uh, a bunch of vehicles, uh, futuristic vehicles, um, going off in that, in that direction. It's a one, it's a one way street. Now I could have had the cars coming this way towards, towards the camera. Um, but then they would have been traveling, uh, from right to left. And, uh, and, and it just, to me, uh, tr moving away from a camera and moving, uh, left to right, uh, implies more motion. Um, so what we have here is the, the van, uh, now an important element is the bridges. They're going to be getting on a bridge soon. So I wanted to show the bridge, uh, just imply it there, but we have the van, uh, on the left cause that's, our, that's where our focus is. Uh, we start from left, you know, we go to right. So the van's leaving an alley from the left. The reader already puts that together. And we get the sense of where they're going with the other vehicles. They're going to go in this V shape, left to right and, and over. Um, had I just, you know, had the camera showing uh, kind of like this, just them in an alley almost into a street, it just doesn't give you the same sense of space and movement as a panel like this does. Um, now for the background here, uh, I knew I needed a bridge. Um, this is a more indust industrial part, or a, just old brick buildings and garages, um, a tight, narrow street. I knew, I, I decided I wanted those sorts of elements here. Um, but I've gone with uh, just big flat buildings, and notice I have got my they stop they stop close to um, a third of the page. Um, let's see how how can I say this? Uh, this shadow, this heavy black here, and this black here, this helps um, draw a lot of attention to this portion right here. It breaks this up if. If this wasn't here, if this was all one color, one wall, your eye might not go to to this spot first. Um, so so that's it's partly to draw focus. It's more balanced because you got a big chunk of black, a slightly smaller chunks of black here. Um, I uh, I've got the tall. I've got the. I just chose not to do light posts or have a lot of pedestrians just to keep the image more simple. Um, I played with lighting and reflection a lot in this. This is like a wet, uh, a wet evening. Um, so uh, the reflections here and the movement coming off the brake lights and, and the shine coming out of these uh, lights on the uh, garages. Um, that's all part of the feel of this world that I figured out. Uh, and, you know, by reference and sketchbooks and previous pages in this book. Um, yeah.
Yeah, here's uh, he gets he's been captured on this uh, van, and you'll see that uh, you know I I'm thinking of the camera, you know me be, me holding a camera, me being on the van uh, with them, and where do I want to position it? I could have chose anywhere, but I really wanted you to see the chair he's in and him very center to it. Now I've got this little cutaway panel panel here where they slap him on the face to wake him up. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that just kind of squeezed in there, but it doesn't really interfere with the, uh, this image we've got, um, uh, he's sitting here. Uh, he's the focus, but we're going to, we need to see that he's enclosed. He's very trapped and enclosed in this space. So lots of black enclosing him. You have, uh, figures closer to him. This is like the leader. He'll be talking to him. He's the closest. And then uh, imposing figures um, next layer back. Now, they're very close to the camera, so they're huge. Uh, I, I had this guy's arms stick out from his body more so that uh, you could see um, this figure on his laptop. He's like connected. You see a cord here. He's connected to, to him. Um, and so I wanted you to be able to see every figure that's in the van. So I, you know, I squeezed him in here. Uh, I chose to, you know, position him there in the van on like the, on a little bench that's on the, the wheel. Um, I could have put him anywhere in the van, but I needed him in the shot. I needed him uh, where you could, you could reference him. So, um, I chose to put him there and it really, it's a triangle from these these three important figures that are going to do most of the talking. You've got our, our leader uh, here and our main character and then the guy with the, the tech. Uh, but if I was just drawing, um, I mean, I chose where to position these people. I chose to leave. I chose to like, I want the camera right here. Where can I put these figures? And if you think of them like you're actually telling your actors where to stand, you're telling this guy, okay, hold your arm out a little further so we can see this guy. Um, get, you two are going to be really close to my camera. And I could have done it even more extreme than this. Um, but this is what I, what I did here. Okay. Yeah, and then like down here. I mean, well, we do a cutaway. We've got our establishing shot. I should mention that. We can cut away to other elements that just have a little bit of background showing. But then um, his sort of POV, and since he's sitting, he's it's a it's a low angle looking up at these figures. It makes them look more imposing, also. Um, and so uh, their shadows growing behind them, um, just you know the lighting underneath them, to a degree. Uh, cause the light source is sort of like here, his, uh, his device he's sitting in. So, um, yeah, important, important image there. But then for this whole next page, there's not really a, a full background. We have, we have to imply a little bit of the background here of the van. We've got a, we know the camera sl on the side here. So we've got a, a side view of, of the van. You can see a little bit of the front of it. Another side view, a little bit of the floor. So these are um, these involve the background, um, but they're not um, a full a full background, if you'd say a full establishing shot. Um, now, when I designed the van, I chose I don't even know where to show you, but uh, I knew I wanted it to be dark in here, but I wanted you to sense the the space too and not just have it be like a black room so that's why i've gone with uh, a a grid uh of like a metal frame to the van walls that is reflecting more light that's you know shining more uh and then and then the dark you know squares in it uh, this is a good example you've got the the frame of the van that you can see and then the hollow spots that are darker catching more shadow or whatever, less light. Um, uh, this, this was a, uh, a choice I made. I had to choose how many, uh, framing members there would be, how far apart, 
I went with, you know, uh, three on the top, one, two, three, four, five, if you count the edges, but just the three here. And on the sides, I went with uh, three also, um, if you don't count the top, the top and the bottom, we've got three. Um, and then I just have a, an idea in my mind of the shape of these, these empty spaces, uh, the distance between them, about how many there are before you get to the wheel where the guy's sitting. Um, and then I just try to keep reproducing those ratios, those uh, relationships. Um, but I, it's not always perfect. It's just good enough to, um, to make sense. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you have to play with scale a lot. Um, he's leaving the van, so I got that central, and he's he's heading uh, away. Um, and so the vehicles that are parked around him, I chose to leave him some space, put these vehicles near the edge. Uh, I could have had a vehicle here. I could have had it here. He could have been trying to go around it, but then you couldn't see him clearly. And, it, and you might block the view of the van. I just wanted it a clear path here. Um, but you have like tiny buildings in the background, a, a um, pretty low horizon. Uh, and you really get a sense of scale of this, you know, the bridge and him versus these tiny buildings and just how far you can see with this uh, long shot here. But we, you know, we go from from this, which is, you know, pretty detailed, to uh, not really needing to draw background besides, you know, the van here, a little bit of the van wall, and then I've got a little bit of the city behind him here. Um, you know, saying in this in this panel, you you would technically see some of the background uh, buildings uh, far in the distance along here that would have made it harder to see the vehicles and the railing, the important part of this shot. Now, in, in, uh, you might have uh, depth of field uh, with a camera. You might have the background out of focus. Um, but uh, it's okay for us to, you know, as a comic artist, you don't have to draw everything that the eye could see. You get to choose what is in view what like or what's I mean what's in focus um, what needs to have a line to it or or what can just disappear into background into you know in this case the color uh, okay all right this cat and fiddle book um, Establishing shot here. Uh, he has entered from the right side. Um, later, someone's going to enter in from the left, but he enters from the right. For this whole scene, the camera is going to mostly stay on this side, uh, this side of the, the room. Um, it's a bakery. I needed to show uh, an oven. I referenced ovens, um, and I decided to put you know, put loaves of bread up on shelves, uh, a little station where maybe they mix the dough, um, some other devices over here on a table, a cabinet. So it's a small space, just a few things I needed to really to put in there. Um, if I did this again, I'm sure I would design it differently and make it more, um, more impressive of a bakery or something, but it's just a street corner uh, bakery in London and Victorian era. And this is what I went with. Um, I needed, I knew that when he walks in, I was going to have him uh, cough up uh, something on, on this, uh, this, on a counter, on a table of some sort. So I knew I needed a table. Um, and that's why there's one here in the shot. So, oh, I also have him entering from the right here um, because first, uh, I've got his his father speaking from upstairs because he's walked in, someone's speaking to him from upstairs, and he he replies. If I had him entering on the right, 
uh, and the stairs on the other end, then, uh, you know, that might get more complicated to go from someone else speaking over here and then to the figure on the left. Uh, it makes more sense to go left to right. Um, choosing a, you know, a simple closed cabinet. I didn't have to draw, you know, shelves of bread behind his body, uh, interfering with your ability to see him clearly. I just made a simple closed door cabinet. And then later when I have to draw that cabinet, um, later when the cabinet's here, easier. Um, you know, the ceiling, sometimes I needed the ceiling. I could have just made it totally black, but I wanted to show a little bit of it. So I show like the boards of the ceiling there. Yeah, here, like we're in the same view. I mean, uh, there's the initial st establishing shot. So we kind of come back to that every now and then. Now we've finally reversed view when it's the POV of his father here coming down the stairs. Now we see the door he came in and we can see that other wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's one. Coming down a hallway, I've got the shadow of this, of these, uh, the railing on the floor here. Uh, that's a fun one because the uh, the light source is kind of low uh, on the wall behind them here, and it's very close to the railing. So I just thought about it. Uh, I don't really reference these things typically, but I thought, well, if the light's there, um, very close to the railing and down low, you're going to get a long shadow, and it's going to actually radiate out from the light source so you've got this spread uh, spreading of them they're not just flat coming across because it's a very it's a very uh, central light source there um, yeah them and, and they you can see the doors already open they're they're coming from left to right even though it's from down the hallway to up uh, closer to the camera uh, it is slightly left to right and uh, they're going into an already open door. We already hear the people speaking. She peeks in. We got a really low angle. Um, she peeks in, and uh, at first she's determined, and then she's like surprised. And he gets to the door at that point too, above her. That's that's why there's such empty space here. But um, all we have to show here is the door, because we've got the open door. The open door. Now we see into the space. In, in their POV, basically, all of a sudden we see see in the space. Um, I had to design this simple little apartment. Um, so we got like, uh, I put the fireplace near her, uh, some light source, some lamps here, a little kitchen area. Um, I chose to put this, this little wall here, um, divider and, and a window with a curtain there. Uh, the table, the, the chair's already been knocked over, so like there's been a little struggle in here. I wanted to show that. Um, but I kept the elements really simple, you know, um, just some simple shapes to the table and to that so that I can draw them at different angles in the room as we go through the scene without, um, without a lot of difficulty. And here's the other shot. Um, so like after we see like her transformation fully to uh, this rat f creature, we see her running out the door um, past them. They kind of kind of squeezing past them. We see what's from this angle. Sometimes I, I do a, a more extreme shot. This one's pretty extreme, uh, where she's running downstairs and he's up uh, above. I needed a very high angle to catch both of them in the shot together to be able to see a tiny cat and a big person on different you know, levels, um, you start to have to find interesting camera angles to do that. And he speaks first to her, so I knew I needed him on the top left and her on the right. So yeah, here's another shot where it's a pretty high angle over the shoulder. Because she's so small in comparison to him, you gotta start doing some interesting low angles uh, and high angles on the camera.
Yeah, and in this case, it's just the wood floor uh, with a little bit of railing. And I chose a very simple railing style, uh, simple floor um, and, and the wood here, keeping it very simple so that it's easy to execute, uh, but still feels like a real space. I think that's enough of uh, this. So there you have it, some uh, insights on drawing backgrounds uh, for comic books, at least the way I think about it. Uh, so. Uh, I hope you got something out of that. Uh, you know, I encourage you to uh, to do your best and and try to learn some new things and uh, find your own way of uh, thinking through uh, how how you put your figures in space, how you frame these shots in your uh, in your work. So be the practice of your art. Uh, find others doing the same, and have a good one. <laughs>